Conservatives, by nature, are cautious about changes to society. Liberals, also by nature, are excited about changes to society. Our founders knew this, and that's why they gave us a constitution informed by everything that was known about civilization throughout history. What worked, what didn't work, and what might be expected going forward. They gave us a system where changes can be written into law, but not too easily. Checks and balances intended to even out the impulsivity native to some humans with the prudence native to others. As time passed, the party of liberals attracted those who are not just open to change, but obsessed with it. Naturally, they gravitated into academia and journalism, this being where new ideas arrived first. Gradually, the notion caught on that conservatives are living in the past because it was assumed that the new theories of civilization, popular in academia and journalism, represented the future. Conservatives seem not to be on the right side of history. But what if I told you that so-called progressives are the ones living in the past, that they are the ones opposed to social progress, that they cling to failed visions of the world from times long past? Don't believe me? Well, stick around and I'll make my case. I'll hit on a few examples here, and you can add yours in the comments below. Last summer, our country was convulsed by massive protests and many violent riots because a white police officer caused the death of a black petty criminal. The entire left-wing media, as well as Democrats vying for election, spent months lecturing the country about racist structures that are said to underpin our society. It wasn't just George Floyd's death. It was also the 1619 Project and popular books claiming that unless you are obsessed about racism, you are probably a racist. I traveled north to Portland, Oregon, where riots, supposedly about racism, were a nightly event for months. This is a city that is almost comically sensitive to all forms of oppression. While surveying the appalling damage, I approached a young black man who was in the act of writing graffiti on a public monument in broad daylight. I asked him why he was defacing community property. He told me that it was because people like him were always persecuted for doing things that whites did with impunity. I reminded him that he was, at that very moment, casually committing a crime within one block of Portland's Central Police Station. He shrugged off the irony. The next day, I watched John Lewis's funeral on television. One by one, dignitaries told us of the massive good that the civil rights leader had done to overcome racism. The headliner, Barack Obama, a man who was elected largely because of his color, fired up the crowd to continue fighting the racism, supposedly crippling our country even now. All of the highly successful black citizens leapt to their feet, giving a standing ovation to the claim that black Americans are still marginalized. Talk about living in the past. In their minds, in spite of their own successes, it's still 1958. To make that vision even more convincing, many left-wing colleges have had blacks only commencement ceremonies. Yes, segregated graduations. This is a picture of Harvard grad students at a separate ceremony in 2019. Dozens of colleges did this in 2017. I have often written that the whole idea of a separate black culture is simply another form of segregation, but let's move on. Portland's summer of rioting was really perpetrated by white malcontents. The city has long been home to radical revolutionaries. In 2020, they co-opted the American left's obsession with race to use in their own fight against capitalism. The hard left has always been driven by a hatred of free market economics. They still believe what a couple of angry Germans, Marx and Engels, wrote in the middle of the 19th century, just as the Industrial Revolution was beginning to spread throughout the Western world. These sheltered intellectuals believed that capitalism was doomed to fail and be replaced by communism. This is what happened instead. 160 years later, after bloody purges that killed over 100 million people, every communist revolution has failed miserably as capitalism has given all the world's people a higher standard of living. But the hard left refuses to be persuaded. That's how locked into the past they are. Even as China has rocketed out of dire poverty with market economics after ditching most of Mao's Marxism, they don't connect the dots. They don't see that in all of the failed revolutionary states, capitalism is replacing communism, the exact opposite of what Marx and Engels said was inevitable. All over the world, 
By nearly every metric, things are steadily getting better. But the American left refuses to believe it, simply because they'd have to admit that their outdated worldview is wrong. There are multiple scholars who have been crunching the numbers over the last decade and trying their damnedest to spread the news. Steven Pinker, Matt Ridley, Marion Tupi, to name just a few. These clear-eyed thinkers gather massive amounts of data from publicly available sources and show definitively that free markets lift people out of poverty while simultaneously solving the scourges of disease and environmental degradation. Their work is all over the internet in recorded talks and podcasts, and every one of them tells how their rational optimism has fallen on deaf ears in left-wing academia. But what about overpopulation? Marion Tupi showed Jordan Peterson how, rather than dooming us, the increasing population of the world is increasing the wealth of individual humans. But the left stubbornly believes the hilariously wrong-headed assertions made by Stanford professor Paul Ehrlich 50 years ago. He predicted mass starvation by 1980. This is what happened instead. The left's doomy outlook is not productive. Look what happened in the states controlled by Democrats when coronavirus arrived. Blue states intentionally hobbled both their economies and their civil liberties. It was as if they'd time traveled back to a pre-scientific world where fear was the only appropriate response to illness. In my liberal neighborhood, you can still see people walking alone, fully masked against clouds of killer germs that exist only in their minds. You'd be hard pressed to explain the difference between that attitude and the Dark Ages belief in evil spirits. Meanwhile, red states held to the status quo as conservatives do, preserving both their economic health and their civil liberties, and they suffered no worse effects from the virus. The only thing that's been able to stop the worldwide decline in serious poverty is the fear-driven overreaction to COVID-19. Look, conservatives like me are skeptical of change for its own sake. We would have opposed Mao's so-called great leap forward and cultural revolution. We would have been horrified by book burning and the destruction of monuments. And we oppose the left in this country everywhere they are destroying our institutions. Not because we want to live in the past, but because we want a future that is built on foundations. Progress has been happening all along, and conservatives are just as likely to embrace it as are liberals. But a lot of bad ideas that grew up at a time when industrialization was still in its dirty, dangerous infancy became doctrines on the left. These doctrines are now themselves the outdated antiquities. Conservatives never fell for them in the first place because they were busy working out the bugs in real time. You see, Caution is not about the past, it's about the present, because the present is where impulsivity can set us on the road to ruin. Those who deny the massive good news brought on by temperate and gradual progress, those who still revel in musty revolutionary fantasies that have long since been proven not to work, those who think that minorities are served by constant reminders of oppression long gone, those who focus only on what is wrong with the world, these are the people who are really living in the past. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and then click the little bell to get notifications.